welcome to this video on my channel and in this video we're going to be predicting the games involving the intercontinental playoff winners so um we've got three east spots left to fill the world World cup spot slots one of them's in europe but the, which um, i've covered but the other two are the intercontinental playoff winners five teams in contention and two spots remain so let's get into this prediction starting with the uae versus australia we don't know who's going to be playing peru as of yet but we'll be, find out who that will be in this game so yeah I've, I've, I've tracked a bit of each team's progress into this game in the qualifiers. Uh, UAE started kind of average. They were in a competitive group, which included Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia, who, did, were, who were the least competitive team, and they only picked up a point. But the others... the it was it was a four way battle through there, which the UAE did eventually end first, and then um, they went on to qualify into the next round. Australia finished first ahead of um, both Jordan and Q8, and so we and, and it was pretty comfortable for them in terms of first place. So then came the the, um, the third round, as it was for the two teams, both in different groups. Both ended up finishing third in the respective groups, and that was how they came to meet each other. For UAE, it started kind of middle of the road, kind of inconsistent. They were a long way off South Korea and Iran, which the other teams were too, but um, just the sort of idea what it was like in, in that group. And there wasn't many wins, so um, that was the interesting part. Um, I think the first tie, the first win the UAE got was away at Lebanon, and um, and that sort of kick kicked them on from there. Aside from that, the only win I can I can remember at the time was um, Lebanon got a win at Syria, and um, there wasn't me there was mainly just draws or they were losing to Iran and South Korea. So um, the, eventually UAE did pick up a few more victories, including against Syria. They did lose to Iraq away. And they also confirmed qualification by getting a victory against South Korea. Good way to end, and therefore they got to the playoffs. Uh, Ali Mubrud is a stand-up player, top scorer in the Asian section and I think probably the whole the world as a whole so um, that's got to, he's got to be a player that um, Australia look out for the UAE also finished second in the Arab Cup beating Syria and Mauritania on the way however losing to Tunisia which resulted in second and then Qatar who a lot of people aren't fancying to do much at this World Cup. Qatar ended it did beating the United Arab Emirates 5 0. I think we can sort of get an idea of the quality level of the UAE. Sacked Bert Van Marwi for funny reason. Um, brought in an Argentinian manager. Don't remember his name, but still, I think the UAE for them, it's going to be it's a winnable game, and the fact they'll be playing in Qatar. At the Al Rayyan Stadium, I still call it that. I, I'm not too much of a fan of the name Ahmad bin Ali Stadium. A bit wordy, and also the Al Rayyan Stadium was its original name. But I digress. The UAE do have a chance. They're not the favourites, but it's a maybe for them. And then you look at Australia. They start. They started pretty all right. They um. She included they got a draw against they got a draw against the Saudi Arabia at home and um, they were winning most of their other games. Japan got off to a slow start, losing two of the first three games. 
one of them was Oman at home, and Oman made a good start as well. Later on, though, Oman, Oman slipped away. Oman, Japan were picking, picking up form, and Saudi Arabia had um, was solidifying their place at the top. And so, it w- for Australia, it was going to be difficult for them to get into that top two. And uh, losing to Japan, not beating China and Oman away didn't help either. Not the team that it was, but um, it still compete. It was still competing with um, Japan and Saudi Arabia. I think they're, they're pro- they'd probably be better than three to six in the Group A of the. Asian section of the qualifiers. Standout player for me is Jamie McLaren. A lot of people also would mention Matthew Ryan, the former Brighton and Arsenal goalkeeper, now at Real Sociedad. It's going to be, I think, so you probably imagine Australia have the more recognisable players. Um, Aaron Moy has also been around as well. So I think it is an interesting game. The conditions will probably suit the UAE a lot more, even though the stadiums will have no air conditioner. So I think it is going to be an it'll be an interesting game overall. Australia shadow with their former self. The UAE picking up form. It's going to be it could go either way, but I just think Australia are a better team. I think they're going to win this. 2-1. I think the UAE will give a good effort and therefore it won't be so one-sided, but I just think Australia are a better team and I think they'll advance. Up next, we see Australia against Peru. Now, Australia, I've already discussed how their qualification campaign went and um, who we should look out for. Now, this is going to be a much tougher game. The UAE is certainly an easier game to win. And then you look at Peru, who they started kind of middle of the road. A lot, a lot of carnival teams do do that in the qualification after about a few games. And in Peru, I think what kick-started them was getting that away victory at Ecuador. And um, things were looking positive. And what definitely put them in the driving seat was winning at Colombia because um, that put them in in a better position of qualifying and Colombia slipped away. And Peru were getting more res- enough results to and more to get into that position. There was this dispute about the goal against... the didn't go over the line against um or supposedly against Uruguay. I did watch the game at the time. I think given the way the standings ended, it did it wouldn't have disrupted whether Peru finished in the top four or fifth in the table. So I think so doesn't matter too much. But uh, Peru uh they they're not I wouldn't say they are quite on the same level as Ecuador and Uruguay, and definitely not for Argentina and Brazil, but there's still something in there that Brazil, Peru, I think they'll be a good team, and I do expect them to be better than Australia. I think it's going to be that they they might have progressed as well compared to during the 2018 World Cup. I'd say they're a better team overall. Australia doesn't have enough right now. I'm going to say Australia won. Peru too. I just think Peru got more. They could, and also they've got, um, and they could win in a number of different ways. Australia probably don't have the same luxury of what game plan they use to try and win the game. And I think Peru gets to the World Cup. And finally, Costa Rica versus New Zealand. Costa Rica eyes probably from the beginning one of the only, if not the only, people to to actually back them in terms of their chances of qualifying. And uh, people had been writing Costa Rica off for quite a while, given that a lot of their players were old. And um, outside of Kayla Navas, when, when they don't have him, that 
they don't have much of a chance, which is was sort of the case. I think they, they've. Su- I think the, the fixtures certainly did help them in terms of um, getting to to the World Cup, getting that getting that fourth place, and Panama not beating Honduras didn't help either. So Costa Rica, Karate, they were hanging in there, having Navas help them. But I think it w- it was that last international break that really did help them, which included beating Canada, getting that win against El Salvador. Well, they did beat the USA, but they were confirmed at least. They were confirmed that fourth place or better at that point. So um, yeah, Kayla Navas, Joe Campbell, Bolanos is even there. They're well set up defensively. Also, as well as the El Salvador victory, I think they've sort of um, upped their game in terms of performing away. So that's that can help them here. Which uh, a few others that stood out was winning away at Jamaica, who albeit weren't the best, and also getting a draw at Mexico. It could be it could be a good, good um, opportunity here, although the argument you might make for New Zealand is, having played in Qatar for a number of games in their qualifiers, they, you'll be m- more used to the conditions in Qatar than Costa Rica will. Although, um, like I said earlier, the um, cooling systems will be in place in the stadium but training facilities will certainly be another matter because Costa Rica and Panama as well if they'd have um, if they were the ones that got this fourth place they are used to heat but it's more tropical heat that um, they're used to rather than desert heat and that's something you might consider for New Zealand if any OFC team was to get into this this um, World Cup you'd have imagined it'd be New Zealand and I um, I think they'd, they've got a fair chance against um, Panama or Costa Rica. In this case, they've got Costa Rica. And the fact that Costa Rica have a good defensive structure, and if they do play like a back four, a back five, for example, then that might be an incentive for New Zealand to go forward. Chris Wood's the standout player for them, and um, New Zealand sort of showed that they can get goals. And, and they even proved that in the final where they played who are the second best team, the Solomon Islands, and probably New Zealand's biggest rivals as well. And New Zealand went on to smack them 5-0, which does um, which will be a big boost of confidence, even though most, pretty much the rest of the OFC teams, apart from maybe Solomon Islands, aren't really don't really stand much a chance against New Zealand, even though Papua New Guinea did give New Zealand a good game or did they play Solomon, Solomon Islands that aside New Zealand will be they had a good qualification and campaign and and they'll come into this game with with confidence uh Kayla Navas will be a, as a goalkeeper will be difficult to beat and um Joe Campbell he, he's found he's found the back of the net at important times and Brian Ruiz who I forgot to mention earlier I think we all thought he was done many people did but um, he's been effective when he's come off the subs bench, so I think that he might be that might be the way he gets incorporated into this game. I think it will. It's going to be an interesting game, probably more interesting than the game Peru's in, because we probably we don't necessarily know who, what, if the best of both teams will show up, and it's a good opportunity for New Zealand to go through. That being said, if the best of Costa Rica do show up, then you'd imagine them to get a pretty comfortable victory. Uh, New Zealand, they've they've got a a good target man to get the goals. Some of the supporting cast is pretty decent, but when you look at the rest of them, you wouldn't say as much. So my prediction, I think Costa Rica are the better team, and I am going to say it's going to be Costa Rica 2 New Zealand won, could even be 2-0. Overall, their team, they have the better team. Beating Kayla Navas in goal is going to be difficult. We haven't really seen New Zealand tested defensively. That's the other thing. I think Costa Rica is going to win this game. So these were my predictions. These were my thoughts. What do you think? Let me know in the, the comments b- below. Who do you think is going to qualify for the World Cup? And... Um, They're my thoughts, and in the meantime, the road to Qatar is almost complete.